So the trade is neutral in nature, slightly negative delta with short strikes approximately 15 to 20 points below to where uh, the current price of uh, Russell 2000. Uh, this trade is going to start out as an unbalanced or a broken wing butterfly with lower long put 70 points below the short strike and the upper long put is 50 points above the short strike. So essentially this is a 70 by 50 uh, broken wing put butterfly that is centered about 20 points below current market price. So the trade is going to start out approximately 45 to 60 days prior to expiration. Um, let's just change this here. So Russell is currently trading at 1520. Right, we're going to start at 1500 with the wings at 14.30 and 15.50. So, 1,500 is, 20, is 20 points below current market price. 1430 is 70 points below 1500 and 1550 is 50 points above 1500. Okay, so this is a Broken wing put butterfly centered 20 points below current market and the lower wing is 70 points below the short strike and the upper wing is 50 points above the short strike. Um, we're going to choose expiration between 45 to 60 days uh, from today. So, you know, we can look at uh, different expiration dates. I, you know, whatever we could find closest to about 50 days out is probably ideal for me, but generally we're gonna look for something that is 45 to 60 days out. Now we're gonna talk about uh, scaling in to this trade. So we're going to enter into three different tiers. Tier one is going to be, um, as we just uh, mentioned, uh, 20 points below current market with the wings 50 points above the short strike and 70 points below uh, the short strike. That's tier one. And then tier two is going to be entered uh, when Russell is trading about 30 to 40 points above the short strike of tier one. So this is the signal or the trigger for the next ad and short strike of tier two is going to be 20 points above the short strike of tier one. Now downside put is going to be 70 points below the short strike. However, the upside put is going to be 60 points above the short strike. So in tier one, our upside put was 50 points above the short strike. In tier two, the, uh, the uh, broken wing is going to be 10 points uh, further out of the money relative to tier one. So tier one was 70 by 50, tier two is going to be 70 by 60. And then tier three, which is the final uh, tier of this trade is going to be entered when Russell 2000 is trading about 30 to 40 points above the short strike of tier two. And the short strike of tier three is going to be 20 points above the short strike of tier two. The downside put in tier three is going to be 70 points below the short strike. And the upside put is going to be 70 points above the short strike. So tier three is going to be a balanced Put butterfly.
70 by 70. So to recap, tier one is going to be 70 by 50. Tier two is going to be 70 by 60. And tier three is going to be a 70 by 70 balanced put butterfly. Now let's take a minute to kind of soak this in. If you have any questions, some keeping an eye on the uh, chat box here in the Zoom. Gabe is asking to go back to a previous slide. So, in the meantime, I'm going to set up a um, option at Explorer to um, All right, so I set up an option that explore to model this trade so we can uh, kind of step through it and hopefully it'll be a little bit more clear to everyone what it is that we're trying to accomplish. All right, so this is a um, October 31st expiration, 52 days out. So 52 days out, we are looking to place our tier one right at 1500, which is 20 points below to where uh, the Russell is currently trading at 1520. So it's a 1500 short strike. 70 points below that is our long downside wing right at 1430 and our long wing on the upside is at 1550 which is 50 points above the short strike of tier one All right so this is a 70 by 50 broken wing put butterfly it is currently trading for about 460 debit So the uh, buying power reduction or margin for this trade is going to be the distance or the difference between the wings of um, this butterfly, which is 2,000, right? So we have a 70-point wing on the downside and a 50-point wing on the upside. The difference between the two <coughs> is um, 20 points. So we have margin of 2,000 plus whatever debit is paid for this trade. So if current debit is 450 or 460, the margin requirement for this trade is going to be 2,450 to 2,460. And that is the risk in this trade. Obviously we're not going to uh, risk the entire amount, but just so that you can get an idea of how to plan uh, for this trade or how much capital is required for this trade. Um, it's going to be at least $2,500 per each uh, tier. So fully scaled, we're probably looking at this trade requiring anywhere between $7,500 to possibly $10,000. So that's tier one. Now, tier two is triggered by uh, price trading above 30 to 40 points to where our current 
tier one is. So if Russell is trading at 1530 to 1540, that triggers our next add point, which will be a broken wing put butterfly centered 20 points above the tier one. So when Russell trades 1530 to 1540, we're going to look to add tier two, which is going to be centered 20 points above tier one. So if tier one is centered at 1500, tier two is going to be centered at 1520. Our downside wing is going to be 70 points. And our upside wing is going to be 60 points above the short strike of tier two. And that's what and that's what this trade looks like scaled tier one and tier two. All right, so we're going to assume that Russell was trading at 1540. This is going to trigger add for tier two, which is going to be a 70 by 60 put butterfly um, centered at 1520. Now, as Russell continues to trade higher and it trades at about 1560, right, which is going to be about 40 points above tier two, that is going to trigger our tier three ad, which is going to be a balanced put butterfly centered 20 points above tier two. So tier three is going to be centered at 1540 and the wings are going to be 70 points on the downside and 70 points on the upside. All right, so this is what fully scaled butterfly looks like. Just remember that in order for us to scale into all three tiers, Russell's gonna have to rally to about 1560, which is not that far away. It's only about 40 points from where we are today. So it very well could happen in the next uh, week or so. And this is probably one of the best cases for this trade is that we get to scale into this trade uh, early on because the later we're the later we, that we try to scale into this trade the more expensive each ad is going to be right so if tier one is uh, currently about 450 debit uh, tier two is going to be probably around the same maybe five dollars if we were to do the same say about three or four weeks from now, the same exact trade could go as high as $8 debit. So the earlier we scale in the trade, the cheaper it is uh, to, to enter into these tiers. And then we're, if, if Russell continues to run, right, assuming we're at 1560 now, and then as it continues to run, we're going to start our rolling sequence, which means we're just going to take our lowest of uh, three butterflies and move it up 60 points. So if, let's say, Russell was at 1560, which triggered uh, tier three add, let's say it runs another 10 points, and now we're at 1570. 1570 will trigger our roll which means we're going to close out tier one, which is the 70 by 50 put butterfly centered at 1500. And we're going to roll that 
up 60 points from 1500 to 1560. Right, essentially, this is going to um, keep its shape the way it is right now, except we're just going to be moving the entire structure higher, essentially following the price of uh, Russell 2000. And then eventually, uh, this, the, the way this trade makes money is we're going to hopefully see some sort of reversion back in, in, into the tent and that's where this trade is going to make the profit. So as the price continues to move higher, we continue to add tier two and tier three. And then if it continues to move higher from there, we keep rolling our lowest put butterfly 20 points above our highest uh, of three butterflies. Eventually, as the price comes back inside of the tier sometime, will pass and these butterflies are going to be obviously more expensive to where they are right now and that's how this trade is going to make a profit. If you guys have questions, this is the time to ask. All right, we got a couple of questions. So Faz is asking, can this be done in IWM? The answer is yes, because um, Russell 2000 or the RUD is 10 times larger than IWM. The same thing could be accomplished, except it's going to require a lot less capital. It's gonna require about one tenth So we can look at um, setting up the same thing in IWM. All right, so the wings are gonna be, instead of 50 or 70 points, it's going to be five by seven. So IWM does not have uh, October 31st, or at least I don't see it here in my platform. So we can, just for this exercise purposes, we could use um, 46 day uh, expiration and we're gonna look at uh, setting up our short strikes for tier one. Remember in the Russell 2000, we had 1500, which is equivalent to 150 strike in IWM. So we'll use that. And then our wing on the downside is seven points lower. So 143. And our upside wing is five points above our short strike, which is going to be 155, All right? So that's tier one. Now we can look at the margin requirement for this trade. It should be one tenth. Remember the uh, tier one in the Russell 2000 required about uh, uh, 2,500 or 24 and change. So here we have the uh, difference between the distance of our strikes in uh, these two spreads is two points, which is $200 plus whatever debit. Debit for this trade is 54 cents. So it, it should be $2.54. And right, and we can see that 
me see if I can grab a pen real quick. Right, so the margin here. is 255. So let's assume we didn't want to do one, let's say we only wanted to do, I don't know, maybe uh, three butterflies. So this would be a six at the short strike and three long wings. All right, so the margin for this trade would be about 765 or $770. So the same exact trade could be replicated and uh, managed using IWM, except uh, it's going to be a much smaller, in dollar terms, it's gonna be a much smaller requirement and um, probably a little bit easier to manage because we have um, a larger number of contracts. So if you wanted to uh, do uh, incremental adjustments, you know, instead of doing one contract of, um, the Russell 2000, the big index, you can do 10 IWMs. And if you have a good commission structure, you don't have to do all 10 in, all 10 out. You can just do uh, two, two, uh, six, or however way you wanna break it up. So in not only you're scaling tier one, tier two, tier three, each tier could be scaled as well. So that gives the straight a little more uh, flexibility we want to call it that. So Gabe is asking any reason why the two and three tiers are different widths. Um, this is totally, um, I guess, proprietary. Uh, we don't have to. We, I mean, we can, we can set the, 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 the width of uh, these uh, wings any way we want. I think that the reason why I'm using tier one uh, 70 by 50 and then tier two 70 by 60 and then tier three 70 by 70 because um, the, the, the further the Russell moves uh, up, um, I want to keep, um, keep the distance of the wings uh, a little bit more balanced because that will add a little bit more net um, that will add a little bit more net negative delta to the trade so if and when the reversion will finally happen it's going to make the trade profitable a little bit faster if that makes sense because if we just kept every single tier 70 by 50, 70 by 50, 70 by 50, our net delta after adding all three tiers would probably be um, flat or it's just slightly negative. Whereas if we're doing the 70 by 50, 70 by 60, 70 by 70, by the time we add final tier three, our net delta is going to be uh, net negative. Mark is asking what happens if the rut moves down, which is a very good question. Right, we're talking about scaling into this trade, but what happens if the, the, the underlying moves in the opposite direction and what happens then? So let's assume that we're only in tier one and the price of the underlying is moving in the wrong direction. So we have our short strike at 150. And if the price of the underlying starts to go down and we start to get somewhere within our break even at expiration, which is, let's just round this off to about 1460 or 146 if we're using um, IWM. This trade is going to be at a slight drawdown about 10% on risk or about uh, $600 if we're using uh, the Russell 2000 or $60 if we're using IWM. So if we start to approach 
and trade somewhere close to our break even at expiration. The easiest way to adjust this is to move the entire thing from 150 to 146. and follow the scaling protocol from there, meaning that if um, the underlying starts to trade higher and we're trading uh, 40 points above our short strike, we add tier two and so on. And if it continues to move lower, we could continue, any, anytime we approach our break even on the downside is what will trigger for us to move the entire thing from, um, from where it's centered down to, and we're moving it to uh, at the money strike. So let's assume that um, we moved we moved our one um, one hundred and fifty strike down to one forty six. So now we're centered at one forty six, and it looks something like this. Our break even here is going to be, let's just call it 142. If the price continues lower and we're at 142, we're going to close the butterfly center to 146 and move it down to 142. So the new butterfly is going to look something like this. And then on the upside, again, we're following our original protocol where price is trading 40 points above. Our short strike, we add tier two. And then if it moves up another 20 points, we'll add another butterfly um, 20 points above tier one. Yeah, Roger said that by the time we're finished with this meeting, uh, we're probably going to have to enter. Uh... Yeah, so if so, like right now, for example, right, um, Russell is trading at uh, we're at fifteen twenty-five. So I would probably. I would probably center my tier one at 1510, right? So it wouldn't be as um, bearish, it would be a little bit more neutral, but I would still keep my wings at 70 points on the downside and 50 points on the upside. This is why, you know, when I, when I put out a trade, I don't really have, you know, a hard number that it has to be one, um, or it doesn't have to be 150 or 151. You know, we're gonna look to center our tier one somewhere about 15 to 20 points below current market, depending on when we're going to enter into the trade. So it's not like, um, you know, 1500 is the magic strike that's going to make or break this trade. So if Russell's at 1525, could I center this, uh, tier one at uh, 1500? The answer is yes. Could I do it at 1510? The answer is yes. I probably would try to avoid doing $5 strikes because sometimes um, the $5 strikes are not available. So you will have to uh, break the wings even further. So I would try to stay around um, whole numbers. So if I wanted to be a little bit more neutral if i was a little bit more bullish on my bias going forward i would probably center my butterfly at 15 10 and then use um, lower wing 70 points below 15 10 and my upper wing would be 50 points above 15 10 so 15 60 on the upside so that's my idea and you know as the price uh, continues to move higher i would scale uh, accordingly so from 1510, my next ad um, would be when uh, price is trading about 40 points above 1510. So 1550 would be my trigger to add tier two and tier two would be centered at 1530, which is 20 points above tier one. 
I am also going to finish and share the um, deck that I am trying to put together that is going to outline just the basics of um, the scaling in and scaling out of uh, this trade. And hopefully we can all use this as uh, a core guideline or a reference material uh, to uh, when we uh, put these kind of trades on. All right, guys, if you have any more questions, we're going to continue in the Slack. Feel free to ask, and uh, we're going to stop here, and uh, we're going to try to do these kind of uh, uh, meetings uh, often just so that we could uh, maybe have some sort of live interaction, and I can share my screen and show you exactly what it is that I'm looking for, and hopefully this will clear things up. So we're going to continue in uh, Slack. I appreciate your time, and uh, we'll talk soon.